listening to the country's most informative auto show, The Automotive Reporter. And welcome back to the second half of the Automotive Reporter. This is Harold Gunn along with Brent Clanton. And our guest is Robert Martell. He is general manager of American Force Wheels. I love the name of that. Do you have anything for, for Brent's Miata? <laughs> no, not, nothing yet, but you never know in the future. <laughs> yeah, well, first of all, it's a Japanese car. so Oh, yeah. well, hey, you know, that's okay. American Force Wheels on a Japanese car These works for me. These are massive wheels at American Force Wheels. Oh, you're looking. Yeah, Brent's, Brent's very techie, so he's fired up. Up your website oh, yeah, yeah. He's, he's looking the whole thing I over am on it right uh <laughs> give us a little 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 history uh uh give us a little background on american force well we started off a couple oh, i'd say about a decade ago now down here in miami florida doing some local stuff uh to some guys who are a little crazy with some ideas putting wheels on trucks that didn't belong on them <laughs> and that trend kind of picked up once we got hit by a couple different uh tropical storms and hurricanes through central florida as people came down from the north to help with the cleanup mm-hmm. start seeing these trucks start asking questions and they're just built on from there now yeah. let me ask you this one though because like I say brent's got the website and i don't i'm at a loss here uh so uh did you guys start off was it uh, uh, practical wheels for certain purposes, or were they cool-looking wheels, or was it both? It was um, on accident purposeful. <laughs> <laughs> it, it was originally just something that was cool to look at, something like you would pull up to the street light, and people still do it now where they're like, well, what in the world am I looking at? Yeah. But in the end, we had found that it was actually quite beneficial to the trucks and the truck owners as far as the turnover of uh, maintenance and um, upkeep as far as tires go. Ah, now are you the guys that originated the the Conestoga look, where you've got these huge rims and very small profile tires on trucks? Um, no, I don't think so. I think that that's always been a trend that's always been on the market. Yeah. But we did we were the ones that brought it towards the dually market, ah. how we originally started off with. Yeah. Ah. Yeah, the dualies have always need help because they're sort of ugly. <laughs> yeah, but they're the biggest trucks on the market that come with a small set of wheels from factory. Mm-hmm. And yeah. they, don't have, they usually don't, most owners don't have any options until we came along. Yeah, why is that? I mean, the factory, you think they're not listening to anybody? I've always wondered that. You know, I go, okay, you make this, but then how come I can then do, you know, a cold air induction, a cat back? All of a sudden, I've, I've done a quantum leap for a little bit of money. Why the hell don't you guys do that? You know? You know, the, the most interesting example I can give about that is when we were approached by Pirelli, the tire manufacturer. Mm-hmm when we wanted to put a set of 24-inch wheels on a dually, and one of the sales managers from Italy this question and came up to us and was like, why would you want to do this to an agricultural vehicle? <laughs> He's never been to Texas, has he? Yeah, I was just not. <laughs> <laughs> well, speaking of Pirelli, by the way, does, does American Force have a calendar? <laughs> no, no, Harold. not yet, not yet. You see where my head is? Yeah, wait. <laughs> <laughs> Harold okay. comes back from these shows, and he's got these ideas in his head. <laughs> mm-hmm. Oh well, what? Is, now, what are uh, I've gotten to know? What are MT type tires? Well, that's what we cater towards the guy who wants to put a set of mud terrain tires on his truck. Mm-hmm. Oh. As opposed to like what they what the guys used to do before is they'd get the factory wheels and throw a set of thirty threes or thirty five inch mud tires on it, and it was just a nightmare to do because. Uh, it just wasn't built for that. And sticking a 13.5 wide tire on a 6-inch wide wheel was just a nightmare to do. And yeah, a bunch of spacers involved. In, in the end, ultimately, what you did is just got a big tire on your factory wheel, which mm-hmm. was kind of cool, but you know, wasn't really what they wanted, I think. Well, something you said a moment ago kind of stuck out, and I wanted to ask you to, to kind of go into detail on that. Uh, putting a, a custom wheel mm-hmm. on a truck... Uh, wheels like you like you offer uh, are uh, result in better maintenance for that vehicle. Why is that so? Uh, well, more so than than the wheels that came on the truck. The way that this all started was with uh, guys wanting to put semi truck wheels on dualies mm-hmm. because it's diesel and it's, you know they, they haul with it, so they figure it's like a you know like a big Freightliner. Sure, but just in a mini version of it. So they wanted to run these semi truck wheels on it. Well, while it was cool, we also found that not only was it cool looking, but it also increased the towing capacity because the tires handle up to 6,000 pounds each as opposed to like 3,000 pounds the factory tires do. And then they last almost forever, which, I mean, typically a, a true 18-wheeler can get about 150 to 200,000 miles, and then you stick them on a truck that weighs not even a quarter of its weight yeah. and towing not even anything close to what a semi-truck would ever do, and you're, you're going to see things over 200,000 miles easily. But you know something I've noticed here recently is a lot of 18-wheelers are starting to be rolling around with uh, not dually tires. They're, yeah. they're wider single wheels on those rear axles yeah. and on the trailers. Uh, what's the thinking behind that? Well, naturally, it's, it's in decrease in weight and decrease in cost. 
problem is the initial purchase for that type of setup is pretty expensive. But once you get it on there, it's one of those things that you, you know, you save on weight, and it allows you to. When you save on weight, naturally you're able to uh, haul more, um, according to what DOT or whatever the federal laws are. When you eliminate, you know, three, four hundred pounds, it allows you one more, one more load, maybe. Mm-hmm. But also there's just the efficiency of one tire versus two. Well, then you get the amortization. You know, after a while, then it starts adding up. My uh, my way to allude to that is I talk about every year where I renew my membership in the airline club, and uh, my first screwdriver of the year cost me three hundred and fifty dollars. Yeah. <laughs> but my second one is only one seventy five. Right? Yeah. You know, you know averages, you averages out after yeah. a while. Uh, now, what are these? Uh, what are these made out of? What are your wheels made out of? All of our wheels are forged aluminum, so it's pretty much the lightest, strongest possible type wheel you can make. Mm-hmm. Um, the fact that we custom build them down here allows us a lot of flexibility with fitments and the type of applications we put them on. I mean, recently we ventured out for me. We used to, for the first four or five years, we only dealt with dualies. Then we ventured off into the eight lug diesel community, uh, like the three quarter ton F 250s, 2500s, stuff like that. And now we're doing some of the half ton trucks, uh, like you know some of the Japanese stuff, uh, the, the Tundra. Uh-huh. And F one fifties and the fifteen hundreds. So yeah, let's don't forget those. Cause, you now. know, because here in the in the south and southwest, uh, mm-hmm. the first thing normally we do when we buy a new truck. Uh, and be it a, uh, you know, a, a, say a standard size, you know, a 1500, you know, a Silverado, a Sierra, an F-150, uh, what have you. The first thing we do, we change the wheels. <laughs> yeah. <you know? laughs> and most of the guys that do that actually are just doing it to get better tires, yeah. get more traction out of it. And that's the funny thing about Texas is that, you know, thinking about it, Texas is our number one state, but it's so diverse. Mm-hmm. There's a you know you deal with you know the Houston area mm-hmm. they're all into the mud stuff they want like 37 inch mud tires 22 inch 24 inch wheels you know just that big look with jacked up trucks and then you get to some parts of Dallas where we do a lot of low profile stuff for some odd reason so you get a lot of the trucks that are lowered or running around on like low profile SUV tires they want that slick you know lowered look and but I mean all across the state and actually all over the country we we deal a lot more of our commercial stuff like our 19.5s and our 22.5s because guys want mileage they want a more efficient vehicle when it comes down to towing and these aluminum rims I got to think are a lot lighter than the stock versions that come out too often they're about the same weight the difference is is the fact that they are aluminum they are going to be bigger. So they get that look they want, but they're also as strong, if not stronger, than the factory wheels. Yeah. yeah. And it's more than anything, it's an enabler to get that tire they want. Because initially what they want is they want that tire, really. They want that 22-inch mud tire, that 22-inch all-terrain tire that they see on, you know, their buddy's truck that has a F-250, you know. So they want that tire, too, and we're just giving them the capabilities of doing it with our wheels. Now, what kind of counseling do you provide? Because I'm in a situation, well, you know, when you start changing things, you know, yeah. look at that good-looking tire, except unfortunately I can't turn right or left because it's too wide. I have to go straight. Uh, or, you know, you get the, the larger wheels and so on. My, my great example, I had a, a, a press test truck. Uh, it was a, a Ram, but it had been Mopar tricked out. Mm-hmm. And what they forgot to do was recalibrate the speedometer. And I got oh, a speeding ticket yeah. uh, on that thing. It was 12 miles an hour off oh wow uh oops you know That'll and of course, you the, of course the cop don't care no i'm going but it's but he said ain't no but boy you know <laughs> pay up so uh, you know i wound up doing it so uh, you know uh, and where they say be careful about what tires you change to on vehicles and so on and so on so if i'm looking at it, i go online i look at your wheels i go this is cool but but uh you know how can you guide me through making sure i'm doing the right combination of things and wrap up the job properly when i'm doing these changes on my vehicle well ultimately Nowadays, especially with the Internet, it means there's so much information out there. So many guys have already done it. So it's easy for a guy to go online and find all the information they want. But besides that, the way we usually deal with it first is we go one of two ways. One of two ways is this. One, we need to know either A, how tall your truck is lifted, if it's lifted at all, mm-hmm. or B, what size tire you ultimately want to have on a truck, and we can go about it that way. So then if I find out what size tire you want, ultimately in the end, I can tell you what size lift you're going to need, and you can proceed from there. I know how much lift you got, I could recommend anything from the smallest tire I think would look cool all the way to the biggest tire that will fit and still allow you to drive it all over the place. And then with the calibration, that's usually yeah. just a matter of uh, Nowadays, going into I the mean, electronics. There's, there's programmers out there that yeah. will allow you to input the new overall diameter of the tire, and it will go ahead and change um, 
uh, that in your speedometer. Yeah. You know, one of the things I was noticing on the website, AmericanForceWheels.com, is a handy little section on maintenance. And uh-huh. whether uh, our listeners are driving around on your wheels or on the wheels that came with the car, keeping wheels clean, especially in Houston, is a chore. I mean, you've yeah. got brake dust, you got all this crud that gets on them and stuff. What do you guys recommend to keep your wheels looking really, really good? Well, what makes a couple of things here unique is the fact that our wheels are forged aluminum, meaning they have a mirror finish polish. Mm-hmm. So they are not clear coated. They're pretty much raw aluminum buffed out to where they're a mirror finish. They look like chrome. And a lot of people are scared of that because they hear polish and, oh man, I got to go get you know some elbow greasing and go put the, you know put some work in on the weekends. It's really not that bad since our wheels are forged. You know, it's a highly compressed aluminum that doesn't, that's not very porous at all, so it doesn't collect a lot of dirt. If you keep it going with soap and water, you'll be good for maybe the whole year. Maybe you have to buff them out. But our, account, our, our um, website offers a maintenance kit that allows you to buff and polish the wheels with the same stuff we use here. So it's a matter of five minutes per wheel, and they look brand new every single time. Nice. i got to get me some of that stuff. Yeah. I really do. Yeah, that sounds nice. good. Sounds good. Now, you guys getting ready to branch out into anything else? I mean, wheels are, wheels is wheels, like we say here. So, you know, you're getting ready to look at more specialized things. You know, I don't know, the off-roaders, the, the, the low-riders, I don't know, whatever. In all honesty, this past SEMA in 2012, last November, yeah. we debuted a bunch of products. With, with we, we, we came back here and realized most companies have been happy to have at least two of the things that we produced uh, and introduced at SEMA this year, this past year. We probably came out with about 10 new products and that we're going to probably be busy for the next couple of months trying to promote those and make sure people understand what they're meant for uh, and what they can, how they can benefit from them. But I think our future is going to be pretty much staying true to what we do here and you know, making great wheels. Do you see your company uh, being aligned more closely with any of the tire manufacturers and, and sort of uh, going off and producing wheels that are specifically best suited for that line, whether it be a, a Pirelli or a Michelin or whomever? It's very hard only because of DOT and, you know, federal laws as far as what's been imported or what's being, what the tire is being used yep, for yep. load capacities. So it's very hard to kind of work with them. What I found interesting is uh, watching over the past couple of years at SEMA or any of the big uh, trade shows, you'll see a lot of their these tire companies, tech guys walking around and trying to understand what the trends are. Mm-hmm. So I think what they're looking for it's the reverse. I wish it was the other way around because we can make anything that you ask for. I mean, there's a lot of guys who call us and say they want to make their dualies single rear wheel and, you know, replace the duals with a single like you see in the semi truck. So we can't because, well, there's no tire available. Ah, so there's yeah. just a matter of time. The tire companies will catch up. It's just a matter, I think, of certain specs and laws they have to abide by. And And from having come to the most recent show and looking at what was there, what trend did you personally perceive to be the direction things are going in? I think this year was a matter of, this past year was a matter of the large wheel and stretch tire Uh as far as it went for mud tire setups. We saw a lot of the, uh, we offer a wheel that's 24 by 14, and a lot of guys were running 38-inch mud tires that were 13 wide, 13.5 you know, 13.5 wide, so it, that tire was basically, sidewall was angled inward, not yeah, outward. Yeah. And I saw that mm. being a trend that these guys are liking. It's, I think it's a West Coast thing that's creeping over across the country. Mm-hmm. I think that's going to be the next couple, you know, maybe the next year or two, and then we'll see what happens from there. You can call it the Sasquatch. There Pretty you much. Go, right, there you go. Hey, Robert, uh, if somebody's interested uh, in, in your wheel lineup, though, where would I find them? I know you've got a website, but if I wanted to buy some wheels... Where do I go? Well, we are well distributed by four wheel parts and discount tire. You can also find us on our website and all over the web, actually, through some of the major uh, distributors of off road products. Yeah, knowing Brent, you're probably already on our website. Too. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> yeah, so he, he's linked you to American, uh, I mean, he linked American Force Wheels to automotivereporter.com. So we're going to help you spread the word. But that is really? your site, right? AmericanForceWheels.com, correct? Correct. All right, good deal. Robert, we really appreciate your time today. By the way, as you mentioned, the DOT, remember when the man comes to your door and says, Hi, I'm from the government and I'm here to help you. <laughs> be, Run. Ve- be very afraid. <laughs> yeah, be very afraid. Anyway, we certainly appreciate your time today. Uh, uh, say hi to my friends, especially in the uh, uh, the uh, uh, Southern uh, Auto Association down there in Miami. A good Absolutely. bunch of people. I was uh, with them back uh, in November at the at Miami Auto Show. They do a real good job there.